In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to hide a repeating group element uh, when its list is empty, when there's nothing to show, just like this. Uh, I have an input here to search for people in my database, and uh, I'm not performing a search right now. I don't have anything typed in. Uh, and this repeating group element is still here, but it's completely blank. It's set up to be a vertical scroll, so I'm seeing the scroll bar. I'm seeing all this extra space here that it's taking up, and I don't really want that. I want to hide the repeating group if the list is empty. And uh, we, I will show you also how to collapse the repeating group uh, so that anything below it, such as this blue shape here, can actually shift up and take up that space uh, and we're not uh, wasting any valuable room here. So just to, just to show you how this page is working, if I type in you know, the name Monica, then I can see uh, a result come up in my repeating group list to show Monica's email. This is just pulling from users in my database. Uh, if I type in a name that I know doesn't exist, you know, I'll still see the repeating group, but there aren't any results. So this is not really useful, um, at least visually. <laughs> we want to get rid of this extra space. So in my editor, this repeating group is just set up to be a vertical scroll for rows here. And uh, it's really simple, actually. If you put the, the repeating group inside of a group, uh, you can then collapse the group. The group element has this collapsing property so that when uh, it is not visible, the group, uh, the entire element's height will go to zero pixels. Okay, so I'm going to right click this repeating group and group this repeating group inside of a group. So I, I'm basically putting this element inside of this container element here, this group, but you can do it um, uh, either by adding a group to the page, just like that, and let me drag the page down, and drag the repeating group inside of it if you wanted to do that. Obviously, make sure your group is big enough. Um, or you can just right click and do group elements in a group and now my repeating group is in a group. I can pull this open so that you can see that there. And I'm also going to give it a background color so it can see it a little bit better. We'll do a kind of like a pink color here and I will make my repeating group stay white. So there we go. We can see here's a repeating group inside of a group. Okay, so this group, what you want to do is check the box at the bottom, collapse this element height when hidden. Okay, and want to make sure that um, we create a condition for when to hide the group. If you want the repeating group not visible by default, then turn the group's uh, visibility property off, the default visibility. Okay, that means that this group will not show when you first load the page. I'll refresh here so that we can see. Okay, so see how that whole element is gone and our blue shape here has moved up because we have collapsed the height of that group. Okay, so now I can add a condition to my group uh, based on whether I'm performing a search and or whether there are search results to show. So uh, an easy one would be when the repeating groups user, so this is my repeating group, it's set to search for users um, and I have this search happening only when I've typed something in here. Uh, by default, it's not going to search anything if a search isn't being performed. Uh, so it's searching for users. So my group elements condition can be when the repeating group users list of users count is greater than zero, right? At least as long as there is one row in that repeating group result, then I want to make this group visible. So I'll select that property and check this box. Okay, so now we will refresh the page. And now I can type in Monica and she shows up. You can see that the group has now become visible. Uh, the repeating group, of course, is also visible because it is inside that group. Just remember too that the visibility property is on the group. You do not have to do anything with the visibility with the repeating group. The repeating group is always going to be visible on page load. Um, it's just that because it's inside the group and you are hiding or showing the group, that will, of course, uh, also affect any elements inside of that group. All right, that's it. If you liked this quick tip, please give this video a thumbs up or leave a comment below. Thanks so much for watching.